So this right here is the result of around 50 hours of work this past week. It's a very simple Wi-Fi enabled Arduino board with a very basic temperature and humidity sensor. I've placed it in my car to detect when the windscreen is likely to be frozen and then it will then send my phone a notification and let me know before I leave the house that I may need to spend five to 10 minutes to frost in my car. So this might seem like a trivial issue, but for me, I'm a last minute.com kind of person and I like to leave the house last minute. So it would be really helpful for me if I could know beforehand that I may need to add an extra five or 10 minutes to my journey time. My car gets a lot of moisture build up from within, especially if I have the whole family in the car whilst the engine's off. So if it's also really cold, then letting me know before I leave my house early in the morning or late at night that the windscreen is probably going to be frozen would be a big help for me, especially because I'm not really one to pay much attention to the weather. So the whole thing is just three very simple components. The main module is an ESP8266, which is basically like a Wi-Fi Arduino board. Many of you may have heard of it. The sensor is just a basic DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Really cheap on eBay, it costs two pound. And then the whole thing's powered using a 12 volt to five volt DC to DC converter, which I plug into my fuse box in my car. And then that's obviously powered from the 12 volt battery in my car. So what happens is the Wi-Fi module will turn on, look for the strongest Wi-Fi signal it can find from the ones that I've given it. So for example, I've put in my home, my office, and then also my phone's hotspot as well. Then once it's connected to the strongest Wi-Fi it can find, it will then send the temperature in Celsius and the humidity in a percentage to the cloud. Once the data is sent, the Wi-Fi module then goes to sleep for 15 minutes. Thereafter, it wakes up and repeats itself. Whilst the Wi-Fi module is asleep, each record of data will be checked against the rules that I've set for it in the cloud. So if the temperature falls below five degrees Celsius or the humidity is above 70%, it will send a HTTP request to an app which will then notify me via an alert that either the temperature is too low or the humidity is too high. Also the cloud service I'm using graphs all the data and stores it all, it's very nice. So I can access all of this data via an app on my phone and then also have a widget on my home screen which I can swipe to whenever I'm getting ready to go out and in that way I can just quickly check what's the temperature in my car, what's the humidity and it gives me an idea of whether or not the screen will be frozen. Likewise you can access all of the data via any browser either on a computer or phone or whatever. Quick side note, although I mentioned that it took me 50 hours of work to do this, that's mostly because I'm a proper noob at this kind of stuff and I was doing it all kind of off of a whim, had no idea what I was doing but if you was to follow my instructions in this video you probably have it done within two hours. So yeah, it's not, it's an easy project. I just basically made it very difficult for myself. For example, I spent eight hours trying to extend my Wi-Fi outside my home to my car using a Raspberry Pi when I could have just used a Wi-Fi extender, which is what I ended up doing in the end. So yeah, that's how I ended up spending a lot of time. All right, so let's talk about powering it. Initially, I intended to use a power bank and charge it once a month. So basically run the sensor off of a power bank and then leave it in the car and then just take it out once a month, charge it and put it back in. However, knowing me, this was just mostly a silly idea because I knew that once it died, I'd probably never charge it again. Running it directly from my battery in my car was a bit of a concern because I didn't want it to kill the battery and obviously run it flat. So what I did was I checked the current drawer using one of those basic voltage current USB devices. And I realized that when it's running, it's running at, you know, 20 to 50 to 80 milliamps. You know, and it's only running for what five seconds. And then when the 8266 goes into its deep sleep mode, it's literally just using 20 microamps of current. Hard wiring it into my battery just made sense because it was more of a set it and forget it kind of solution. And those kind of solutions just work perfectly for me. So what I did was I ordered this 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC converter with a fuse adapter from Amazon, paid 12 pounds for it. And then I attached it into my fuses in my car. All you had to do is just literally prod each fuse with a multimeter with the ground connected to any metal chassis on your car. And then you can see which fuses are live constantly. The only thing you need to be aware of when you're doing this is to make sure that you're not connecting it to a fuse that powers off, for example, after 20 minutes. So some cars have that. I managed to find a fuse that was live 12 volts the whole time. Pro tip here is that these 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC converters actually have built-in low voltage protection whereby they'll cut off once a certain voltage threshold is reached. So I realized that this kit has a low voltage protection of around 11.7 volts and at the time of me installing the kit my battery was at 11.66 volts. So what happened was I set up everything correctly, tested the voltage on the fuses, connected it all together and then 
the sensor would just power on for a second, half a second, and then turn straight off. And I was frustrated as hell. I did everything. I spent about eight hours <laughs> trying to connect this fuse in. And then it occurred to me that maybe it has low voltage protection. Checked my battery voltage. It was 11.66 volts. Took the car for a drive on the motorway for half an hour. And then, yeah, it was at over 12 volts and everything worked fine. So on the plus side, it means that you'll never get a dead battery from this device, which is perfect. All right, so let's talk about using the data. The data from the sensor is sent to a cloud service called thinkspeak.com. Thinkspeak is an open source IoT free service. IoT meaning Internet of Things. It uses APIs to retrieve data from things using the HTTP and MQTT protocol over the internet. So the application saves all of the data from the microcontroller and then sends it and stores it in graphs on the cloud. So the graph can be viewed from the browser, mobile apps, widgets, etc. I highly recommend using them. So let's talk about alerting myself. So ThingSpeak is really brilliant in that regard. It allows you to set rules on incoming data that when a certain condition occurs, then it will activate an HTTP request or even send like a tweet out. I've got mine set up such that when the temperature is below five degrees Celsius, it will send a HTTP request to IFTTT. If you don't know what IFTTT is, it's a website where you can program responses to events that occur. So for example, I use IFTTT to turn off my Wi-Fi and activate my Bluetooth when I leave the house. And I also use it, for example, to mute my phone when I enter university campus. In case you're wondering, IFTTT stands for if this, then that. So it's quite a cool name. I'll just call it if this then that because it sounds easier and less weird than saying IFTTT. So I've got the if this then that app on my phone and then when that HTTP request is sent from thingspeak.com to if this then that, then it will send me an alert on my phone to let me know that the temperature in my car is low. Now, if you'd like to set this up, check out the description because I followed two different tutorials to set this all up. It can be a little bit tricky if I'm honest with you, but if you follow these tutorials, for now they're up to date. But what I found is that after a few years, the information kind of gets a little bit old. So so if you're watching this in a few years time, apologies, you're probably just gonna have to Google a bunch. Things change quite quickly in this space. So the first link in the description will be a link to the manual, which I used for the weather station kit, which I actually got the ESP8266 from. The second link will be a link to the code that I used to integrate the DHT11 sensor with the ESP8266. And then the third link will be how to use the deep sleep node MCU functionality. And the fourth link will be ThingSpeak and IFTTT and how to integrate those two together. So as well as having an alert for less than five degrees temperature, then I also have an alert set up for the humidity, whereby once the value of the humidity reaches 70, meaning that the humidity in my car is over 70%, then it will send me an alert as well. The great thing about ThingSpeak is that you can set it up such that it will send you an alert every single time that event occurs or you can set it such that it will send you an alert just once when that event occurs. And then when that condition is no longer true, it will then reset. So in my case, for example, once my humidity in my car reaches above 70%, it will send me an alert. And then it won't send me any more alerts until the humidity drops back below 70%, which is honestly just perfect. You don't really find, for example, in these use cases that the temperature throughout the night is gonna be fluctuating, you know, from five degrees down to two degrees, back up to six degrees generally it trends downwards and it trends upwards. So this kind of alert system is perfect for me. So the next challenge was finding a storage location in the car. Obviously I needed it to be close to the windscreen because that's the temperature and humidity that I'm most interested in. If I've got it in my boot, it doesn't really serve me. And then I also needed it to be close to my Wi-Fi signal, which meant that both the ESP8266 and the DHT11 sensor, both of them had to be away from obstructions and have kind of like a decent line of sight to the outside world. And so it couldn't be, for example, in my glove compartment. Thankfully, I have already previously installed this Android tablet in my car and I had to actually mount a GPS device in a similar kind of situation whereby it needed a decent signal line of sight and be at the front of the car, etc. So all I did was just place the ESP8266 and the DHT11 sensor both together right next to my GPS module, which I'd already set up. So it was simple for me. And that's about it really. That's my car temperature sensor. So let's briefly talk about some future improvements, which I'd like to make. Like I mentioned, I bought this as part of a kit from Banggood for 12 pound. It's part of a weather station kit and it came with things like a light sensor, a pressure sensor, an OLED display. It's quite a nice kit actually, and I'll link it below. So what I was actually thinking of doing is 
I'm considering adding a light sensor such that when the ESP8266 wakes up from its deep sleep, it will then check if there's a load of light. If there is a bunch of light there, then it goes back to sleep without even bother sending over the readings. The reason for that is that my car hardly ever freezes up the windscreen during the day. Even when it's, for example, snowing outside, the inside of my car is still all right. So that way then it would only send readings during the nighttime and that kind of makes sense to me. So that might be an improvement I'd like to make. Also, I'm quite interested in data collection and handling data generally speaking. So I'd like to know kind of what's going on and it would be cool to add more sensors to the car, although I'm not sure what I would really need or what would really be useful. I do have an idea to have a Raju Pi in the car and have it connected to my OBD2 port. The idea would be for it to track things like my zero to 60 times or how many miles I've driven, that kind of stuff. That information in and of itself isn't really that interesting, but I feel like I might be able to use it to get like an overall general car health check kind of thing going. And perhaps if I could do that, then I could integrate this temperature sensor with that Raspberry Pi and then have it as one whole kind of big system, maybe set up an app and then have it on my Android tablet in my car. So that's what I'm thinking. Maybe add, for example, car tire pressure sensors, that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's where I'm at kind of thinking about future improvements. Anyways, enough rambling for me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you guys in the next one.